Okay, so it's 531. So we'll go ahead and uh, open the meeting uh, of the Board of Appeals. Um, we will initially just have see if there's any members of the public who would like to make comments uh, unrelated to any application on the agenda. Then we'll invite the applicant or his or her representative to do a brief presentation of the application. Then we'll take questions from board members. Um, and then if there's any members of the public here, we'll invite them to comment by raising their hand uh, electronically. And, um, and then after that, we, uh, we'll, we'll see where we go. I'm David Bloomberg. Uh, other board members here are Sarah Northrup, um, Maureen Scanlon, Elizabeth Silver, and Carolyn Mish is here from the city of Northampton. Um, I guess the voting board members, I guess would be Sarah, Elizabeth, and me as full members, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, Maureen is welcome to participate fully. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I'll first ask if, and uh, Carolyn, if are there any members of the public in the waiting room uh, who uh, otherwise uh, will assume no public comment? No, there's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no one in the waiting room. Nope. Okay. So um, we'll move to the first item of the agenda. Notice of today's hearing was published on September 30th and October 7th. And that one item on the agenda is an application for a special permit for a taller, bigger sign submitted by the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association at 1 Bridge Street, Northampton, map ID 32A-246. Um, and the uh, board members have a copy of the application and some uh, images uh, in the electronic planning department file, but we'll ask the applicant to do a brief description. And uh, anyone who speaks, I ask that you identify yourself by name and address for the record that we're keeping. So we'll go ahead and, and Carolyn invite the applicant to present. Yep. So um, do you have, oops, I forgot to, let me just make you co-host. Sorry about that. Okay. There you go. Thank you. I have, um, I have some, I think, better photos or better um, than maybe the what y'all have. So we could do a screen share, but first your name and address. All right, I'm Greg, Greg Kerstetter. I live at 46 Bradford Street here in Northampton, Ward 3. I'm the president of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association. Okay, thank you. And we could do screen share if you've got some other images you wanted to show us, but go right ahead. Okay. Um, let's do this one first. <clears throat> So this is a drawing from Will, and he's our builder designer. Um, and it shows the sign at um, the height that we are proposing, which would be six and a half feet, not the five feet by right. Um, and this goes, this will go, um, the proposal um, for it uh, is to go in Lamprin Park, um, probably about, uh, 20 yards from the play structure um, that belongs to the school. So it's sort of across the sidewalk. There's a sidewalk that cut, that sort of divides uh, the, um, the Bridge Street School Playground and Lampern Park. And this would go on the Lampern Park side. It's designed for the community. And so we wanted to put it where people would congregate. And that's where a lot of parents congregate. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an old fashioned, communication device. <laughs> we want, the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association is very keen on, in any way, getting sort of community activities. And sometimes people actually make and distribute flyers. And um, we wanted, um, and our, uh, one of our former board members who passed away a couple years ago, you guys <clears throat> may or may not have remembered Jerry Butker, um, but he was uh, certainly uh, a very active member in Ward 3, but also, um, did a bunch of work for the um, uh, North Anthony NEF and North Anthony Educational Foundation and other, he was just a well-known guy and he loved, uh, he loved signs, he loved our ward and he loved the Bridge Street School. 
And uh, when he passed away in January of 2019, uh, we came up with the idea of um, erecting two signs in his memory. One has already been erected in front of the Bridge Street School. It's the blue wooden sign. I don't know if you all have seen it. Bridge Street School was the only school, uh, well, the only school in Northampton without uh, a sign out front. So we rectified that and um, put that out there. But this is going to have where um, below the um, below the signboard, we're going to also have a little um, another sign that says the uh, Budger Memorial Community Board. Um, and so that's and we've raised money, you know, sort of based on that. And people have been super generous, including his brother, um, based on sort of being able to <coughs> being able to. Um, sort of remember Jerry from one of the things that he, or a few of the things that he loved, the, the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association and sort of signs and communication. So that's that's where it all came from. That's mm -hmm. the, the quick history of it. This is all, um, this is Cedar. Um, our builder, Will, um, has a, he um, spends a bunch of time up in, it's white cedar, he spends a bunch of time up, up in um, Vermont. So he bought some white cedar up there. Um, he uh, also, and this is, um, it's a metal roof. Um, and I don't see if we can, uh, well, let's see if I can, uh, let's see, get another, um, maybe that would, so that's, there's, there's, that's sort of, and, and remarkably enough, uh, I don't have the photo to show you, but um, he just texted me a photo of it and it looks just like that. <laughs> it's, it really is a beautiful little structure. Um, so we're excited to put it in. Okay. And, and the reason for the special permit, I think, is because it exceeds the height otherwise allowed in the uh, uh, for a sign, I believe. Yeah, I think that I think by right is five feet. But um, when we sort of did a mock design of five feet, it, uh, it felt like if you were an adult, you had to scrunch down to be able to see things. So we really wanted it, the, you know, the, the signboard portion to be up to six and a half feet. And are, will there be any lighting on the sign? No, there will not. No okay. lighting. Okay. And it's double and, and it's double sided. Right. Uh, I'll let, I'll, I'll ask if any other board members have questions. I, I don't have any questions. I just want to say I, I commend you for doing this. I, I knew Jerry. We did a lot of political work together. And then um, I, not that I can fill his shoes, but I took his place as a commissioner in the housing authority after he passed away. And mm. he was tremendous. Um, so this is a great thing to be doing. And I'm glad you're doing it. Well, I appreciate those words, Elizabeth. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's great. I have a couple of questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> And uh, <coughs> it's it, it possible it was in the uh, application, but I missed it. But in in re the regarding the placement, is this how does it relate to that "Welcome to Northampton" sign? And is this a, a second question? Is this meant for people walking in the park or people driving by? And I guess they go to hand in hand. Okay, the "Welcome to Northampton" is um, it's out by the road. And it's um, further, uh, I guess, uh, east toward Amherst a little bit. This one is sort of um, really close to the school. So you, you certainly would be able to see it from the road, but it was not meant for people on the road. And there is, um, the, uh, it's meant for people in the park, but it's also, uh, it's also meant, it's really right near where all the parents and all the children play after school. Um, so that, you know, so before and after school, it's a huge congregation, well, huge, but a, a lively congregation of people. And that's where this is. Great. So it's meant to walk up to. It's Correct. Not, okay. Yes. That's really, really cool. And this is only just a kind of a not particularly relevant question in terms of our um, decision making, but I love personally the asymmetry of the roof line that, that protection above, is there a functionality to that case? Well, you know, we did a lot of research and there's a lot of bad, boring signs out there and we didn't want to be one of them. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, we, um, Will, our designer um, went through, you know, we, we all went and took pictures of lots of signs 
up and down the valley and we wanted something that was going to be um that was just going to be pleasant to look at yeah. um and uh, we thought we came up with something so Thank that's you. why yeah, the Thank functionality you. i mean it's four feet this uh, the sign is four feet wide so there is you know there is certainly functionality to the roof but the asymmetry not necessarily it's just aesthetically pleasing thanks thank you um i'm wondering about the so is this this is opposite uh, this is across the sidewalk from the play area correct, correct. yeah and um is is that <clears throat> mowed by city staff it is okay yeah um, that's um that's a very complicated as you probably well know area in the in the city it's you know it's where the recreation department the board of public work or the department of public work sorry i'm dating myself and the school department all come together and have a hand in the world um but i do believe it's the department of public works we had rich parasoliti over there a couple weeks ago and and were uh and i cited it with him so and and he what gave his go ahead he's going to help us sort of navigate the trench permit world with the department of public works so, um, That's good. but he um, uh, sort of gave his informal go ahead, not that he has mm -hmm. any say in that, but um, anyway. Is it um, uh, a pressure treated four by four that's then wrapped with cedar? No, it's full cedar. We decided to go full cedar and we're gonna put it on, um, we're um, gonna put uh, concrete footings in and then um, attach it with, um, uh, um with metal uh with metal Close bracket space. yeah yeah and so they're gonna be they're gonna be pretty heavy duty i think they're gonna go at least uh two uh 18 inches at least um so we're that's uh what's that's 18 the inches the the metal footings that attach the cedar posts to the concrete footings ah so you could when the cedar rots out <laughs> or gets chewed up by the string trimmer you can Swap it, out. Swap it out. You don't have to dig up the concrete. Um, okay. Well, the only um, so I was that was just you know curiosity based on my experience with cedar lately. It, it's not it doesn't last very well. Um, I would also uh, note I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if it had a little solar panel and a little light that was on you know at dusk or early morning when kid peep families are arriving. Um, it would have to be very limited in its times. So it wouldn't be on at night bothering neighbors, et cetera. Right. But, um, that's a, that I would say, um, I love that idea. I would say um, we would need to do more fundraising for that. Um, we are at the sort of the end of our fundraising <laughs> capacity right now, but, but, I, but I like that idea. Um, that would have to be um, part of our, uh, our permit decision correct david and carolyn um well let's say you approve this sign. you're approving a sign for the height yeah if there are, if there was lighting at the time proposed you would want to make sure that it um, met standards and you knew that was part of it but let's say in five years if they decided to add lights there's still a provision in the zoning that dictates the lighting levels for signs. So they could go through that permit review without coming back to the board. Okay. All right, thank you for that suggestion and thanks for clearing that up too. I have no further questions. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and of course you alluded to some of the downsides of lighting, the uh, you know disturbing neighbors at night and so on, uh, depending on the nature of the lighting. So. I'm perfectly comfortable with the application as presented. Um, I'm not sure there's anyone who didn't know Jerry Budger, um, but I overlapped when I was a trustee of Forbes Library and he was very active with the Friends of Forbes um, among other places where we cross paths. So I, I agree with the rest of us that um, I think this is a very uh, nice tribute and uh, very useful and functional to the neighborhood and um, um, I'm a uh, hundred percent comfortable with it. Um, <clears throat> so if there are no other questions and Carolyn, I, I, are there still no other uh, people right. waiting? Oh, I should ask Carolyn, you didn't get any 
feedback either way from DPW or any other city agencies? Um, let me just double check. I know I didn't get it from anybody else. DPW gave me information today on other, I don't think I got anything from DPW, so, but so just they, so they have know. to approve the location. So the, the DPW does. Yeah. So, so that happens either way. Yeah. Okay. So we, and um, we, we did reach out to Emory Mojo, the rec department, and Beth Chiquette, the principal, obviously knows that this is happening in her front yard. Um, and, you know, and, and John Provost, the superintendent, knows. And so I felt like we've done our due diligence about reaching out to people who um, have a little bit of hand in it. So, good. I include, did you mention the principal at Bridge Street? Yeah, her name's Beth Chiquette. And, okay, she, good. and she absolutely and utterly knows this is going in. Great. And um, Carolyn, no other communications that came to your office either nope. away on this application? Okay. Um, so I think then we're probably ready for a motion to close the public hearing after which we cannot have any more input from the applicant. Um, our so moved. Second. Okay. okay. And a roll call vote, please, Carolyn. Um, Sarah Northrup. In favor, yes. Uh, Elizabeth Silver. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes, so the uh, motion to close the public hearing passes. And now do we have a motion on the uh, application for the special permit as presented? Sure, I'd be delighted to make the motion to accept the application as presented for the sign board um, dedicated to Jerry Budger and the um, dimensions that are being proposed and in, in the way it is being set up. Second. Second, and uh, a roll call, please. Uh, Sarah Northrup. Yes. Elizabeth Silver. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes, that's unanimous, that passes. Congratulations. Uh, we look forward to seeing it uh, when, it's, when it's up. Uh, and. Um, the uh, time frame on this? Well, we'd like to get it up before Halloween, but I, I know there's that we have to, Carolyn, we have to, do we have to wait a certain amount of time now that we have approval? I mean, I, I would just, you can ask the building commissioner of whether or not you need to wait for the appeal period to expire. And the, um, appeal, the appeal period is 21 days? 20 days from mm. the time, so from the time it gets to the clerk's office, which might be tomorrow, might be Monday. Okay, so it would be up to him. He could waive it if he sees fit. Right. Okay. All right. And the, the theoretical risk of building it before 20 days is if somebody comes out of the woodwork to appeal our decision, which is kind of inconceivable here, but just so you're aware. <laughs> right, okay. Um, um, I think that's, I don't think we have any minutes. So um, if there's no other business, we could just, have a motion to adjourn. Uh, let me just say thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, you're welcome. Yeah, thank I, you. We, we, okay. The Ward 3 Neighborhood Association, Association totally uh, appreciates the uh, your your kind words and we thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, right. And um, actually, Carolyn, um, do we need to talk about scheduling? Is there anything we should be aware of uh, upcoming meetings or? Um, sure, let me just check. I'm. Pretty sure there's there's no public hearing scheduled for October 28th. Um, and I don't know yet about um, the November meeting. The November meeting, just so you know, would normally be November 11th, but that's Veterans Day. Oh. So would, if we do have a meeting, are you all available November 18th? which is the following Thursday. Yeah, and that's actually better for me. I have a meeting on the 11th, it's right around. Uh, yeah, so okay. that would be I am be not available anyway. on the uh, 18th. Okay, I'm what no. about Sarah and David? I, I am available the 18th. Okay, so why don't you pencil that in if that works for you, Sarah? And then I yeah. don't know, I won't know yet for another few days whether we're gonna have anything. Okay. I'll let you know. 
And thank you for that other email, the update on that other. So does that mean, Carolyn, sure. we would definitely not have, oh, well, we won't have something on the 25th. It's Thanksgiving, right? Correct. I'm not, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And so then after that, it would be Sorry. December 9th. Yeah. December 9th, okay. So is there anything that the zoning board needs to do in follow up to that other matter? Or does that just automatically happen? No, there won't be anything that you all would need to do. Um, so we have still two weeks, so less than two weeks. The building commissioner would take whatever action would be necessary. Um, and the only, uh, and so I, you know, I don't know how it's going to play out, but that building commissioner is the enforcement entity. So he wouldn't be called in to do anything. Interesting developments. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I guess I guess now we could move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Uh, Sarah Northup. Yes. Uh, um, Elizabeth Silver. Yes. David Bloomberg. Yes. That's unanimous. So, uh, um, by the way, Carolyn. Um,